Thanks for joining us, and today we're going to talk about Kriya Yoga Controversy. So there have been a number of videos that I have posted um, around subjects that are somewhat controversial in Kriya Yoga. From my perspective, they're not really controversial, but they've ruffled some feathers. And so I've had my fair share of trolls on my YouTube channel accusing me of being narrow-minded or short-sighted or ignorant, uh, in particular an ignorant Westerner. So one particular video is about how Yogananda changed Kriya Yoga. In particular with Kriya Yoga Pranayam, Yogananda made a variety of different modifications and these changed the way drastically the way that Kriya Yoga was taught to introduce a sort of mouth breathing pranayam with particular sounds in the throat that was using an ujjayi breath which is used in Hatha Yoga to replace the Ketri Mudra which was taught by Lahiri Baba and many other lineages including the one that I'm part of which is the Panchanan Vajracharya lineage which is considered the original Kriya using nasal breathing with Ketri Mudra as a means of doing the Kriya Pranayam. And so Yogananda also got rid of the Om Japa practice, which is intrinsic to the Kriya Pranayam. And when I've talked about those details and the way that they compare with the original Kriyas taught by Lahiri Baba, I have been highly criticized by some trolls saying that all these aggrandizing statements about how Yogananda was perfect, how he was a divine being and all of these kind of things and how dare I as an ignorant Westerner critique that. So I am not trying to critique Yogananda because Yogananda was a incredible person. He had um, brought you know Kriya Yoga basically to the West but when he ended up teaching it to Westerners they had some challenges so he made some modifications to try and make things easier. But as a result, the Kriya Yoga that he taught was not as effective as the original Kriya. And it's not so much about um, what was original and what was modified, but actually what works. And so the approach that I take when I talk about Kriya Yoga is from an evidence-based approach. It is what actually works. In particular, when we look about the central nervous system and how Kriya Yoga affects the central nervous system, how it activates the parasympathetic nervous system to get you into a low idle state, into pratyahara, this internalization. And so I know because I've had the comparison between doing the SRF or YSS Kriya and the one that is taught in the Panchanan Bhattacharya lineage because I was in SRF for more than 10 years. And so I know what that's like. I learned to do Kriya Yoga in that way. And I got into some challenges where I would basically uh, reached a plateau where I could go no further. And I consulted SRF monastics and asked them about uh, you know, the practices, about some of the higher Kriyas, right? Because I took them all. And they could not give me a sufficient explanation that, that would allow me to go past my plateau. But when I learned Kriya Yoga, the original Kriya Yoga, as taught in the Panchanan Bhajacharya lineage, I got it immediately. When I was initiated the first time in that lineage, I went in, into the tranquil breath during my initiation. So I understand that people are trying to defend Yogananda or trying to defend other lineages and saying, hey, don't criticize our lineage. I'm not criticizing your lineage. What I'm doing is trying to shed light on the way that Kriya Yoga works and how certain modifications actually slow down your ability to get into deep meditation. One of the things that is taught in SRF is the Hong Sa technique of concentration, basically following the breath with a mantra. And that is considered, it's called the baby Kriya, as if you had to do it before you did Kriya Yoga. There is no need to do a preparatory technique before doing Kriya Yoga because Kriya Yoga is sufficient to get you into Pratyahara fast. And if you do it correctly, it can get you into Pratyahara, into an internalization in five minutes or less. So I know this because I've gone through the transition, learned the proper way to do things, and found that the way that it is taught in the Panchanan Bhajacharya lineage is very expedient, that you will get into deep meditation quickly. What I'm trying to do is to shed light on how the practices actually 
actually work. Why would I do this? Why would I care, right? If I learn to do it, why would I want to share it with others? It's because I want to save others work. And the folks out there who are like, you know, how dare you? And you know, how, you know, you can't say anything about these lineage and so on. Like, fine, you can believe what you believe, but the students out there who actually want to progress, I urge you to look at the foundational principles on which Kriya Yoga is based. If you understand that, you will be able to move very quickly. You will accelerate your spiritual progress. And that is what I am interested in, is reaching out to folks who actually want to say, okay, let me look at my meditation. It's okay. You know, I, I feel a little bit of peace sometimes, you know, and this kind of thing. I'm like, well, what if you could have that and more very, very quickly if you just learned how things work? So that is the whole reason why I may seemingly be critical of some practices taught in other schools is because I see them slowing down the development of their students. And for me, this is not okay. I want people to have the practices that, that are empowering them, that allow them to move quickly, allow them to develop skills so they can apply those skills and get results in meditation. Isn't that why we're here? Do we want to be waiting 20 years to get into higher states of meditation? Or do we want to be paving the way now to get into very quick quickly into deeper states of meditation. So folks who have meditated a long time and are having success with their practice, you know, maybe what I say isn't for you. But regardless, there are still some principles in there that you can likely benefit from. If you can see past your own prejudices of me being an ignorant Westerner telling you how Kriya Yoga works, right? I understand some white guy talking about Kriya Yoga, why the hell should he know? He should be some Indian guru. Well, you don't have to be. If you understand things, you can share that knowledge and that knowledge can be empowering if put into the right hands. So that is the purpose for which I do this. And what I often see is that students from other schools will be creating a very rigorous, long routine of Kriya Yoga where they can be doing it for multiple hours. But that's not the point. It's not to create a routine. It's really to be effective at meditation. When Yogananda would sit down with a group of people and they would be shifting around and they had problems to getting into meditation, he would crack the whip basically, right? Because he expected people to be or to try to attain what he attained. He could go into the tranquil breath like that, right? But that's because he had worked at it because he was utilizing his experience and he had a very effective meditation practice. A lot of people around him did not. We know that Diamata Fay Wright, she also developed the skills inside so that it is reputed that when she would go into the Hong Sa, right, that she would just go into the Hong and the Sa and then she'd go into the tranquil breath right away. She basically, what they thought was breathlessness and they were like, wow, this is amazing. But actually it doesn't take that long to train yourself to get into the tranquil breath if you have the right techniques. So the folks that want to disregard what I'm saying because they consider me an ignorant Westerner are really following into a fallacy where they're trying to critique the person but not what they say. Wouldn't it be more reasonable, more intelligent to look at what I say to try to understand it and then see if I am correct? That would be the intelligent way of evaluating things. The thing about the progress of knowledge is that if there is not innovation, and your knowledge base does not adapt to the current situations, it's going to reach a dead end. So when we have innovation and things move forward and people have insights into the way that practices work and they share those, you're building on the knowledge. You're increasing the effectiveness of it. And I think everyone wants that. So if you have been a long time Kriya Yoga student and you just want to keep doing what you're doing, I don't have a problem with that. But what I do have a problem with is if you're using your limited viewpoint to dissuade earnest students from progressing as a means to maintain your position in a spiritual hierarchy. So if you have any questions about this video, feel free to send me an email at info at Also check our website at moderncrea.com and our YouTube channel. So thanks for joining us and we will see you next time.